Hello, Vineyard. Man, I hope you are having a great week. Kind of feels a little bit like spring is coming. I love this rainy, snowy stuff and how it kind of heals the land that's kind of in the midst of this drought. So I will take some more of this. Um, I've got one important reminder for you today. So this Friday night at 7 p.m. is our worship and ministry night. These nights are a vital part of our rhythm because it gives us a chance to be in, po in a posture of worship and also with some readiness to hear the voice of God. For me, these nights are the ultimate time of, of response. And they're also times that, that we see ministry happen sometimes just because we show up and we're open to it. Uh, now, so if you are, if you're weighed down, if you're dry, if you're tired and weary, man, come and get filled. If you're the opposite of that, though, if you're riding high, if you're feeling good, come and worship with all of that joy that's in your heart. Just let it come out and let it explode out. In other words, come to worship and ministry night and let God meet you where you are. Uh, this is also a night about encountering the living God. So this makes it a great event to use as an invitation to somebody that you might know that you encounter in the time between the Sundays. These nights always leave me in a place of just amazing hope. So if you know someone that could use a little hope, make a plan to meet them here on Friday night at 7 o'clock and also just come with the expectation to meet God. Now this coming Sunday, we're back in the Sermon on the Mount and, and we're going to continue to unpack the metaphor of salt and light in chapter 5. The metaphor of the influence of the beatituding person, uh, the, the influence that that person has on the world around them. Now last week we talked about how being the salt of the earth, the barrier to decay, the, the very thing that keeps the world from, from going rancid, uh, can simply be put as operating in the knowledge that God loves us. So this perfect love is the enemy of fear because it disarms questions of worth. It disarms questions of forgiveness. Am I forgiven? Um, can I be forgiven? It disarms questions of restoration because we claim the truth that there's nothing we can do to make God love us more. There's nothing we can do to make God love us less. This love causes the opposite reaction of fear. Fear repels. Fear leads to running from intimacy with God and with others. Uh, think about what happened on the night that Jesus was betrayed. Fear overtook the disciples, and we see in Matthew 26, verse 56, that they deserted Jesus and ran away. When we respond out of fear, rather than to the love of God, we follow this pattern and we run away. We, we run from intimacy. We run from experiencing God. So to break that pattern is to experience God and realize his love. This love is also a vital component of the process of becoming the, the beatituding person, to become our beatitude. It reveals another truth that, truth that Jesus loves us as we are, but also that Jesus will not leave us as we are. This simply means that, that the more contact we have with Jesus, the more he rubs off on us, the more able we are to sacrifice our will in place of his. So what we find then is a heart like Jesus being developed inside of each of us, a heart that compels us to service for the good of those we see in the time between the Sundays. This is our journey, and we'll keep it rolling this coming Sunday. So, Vineyard, I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. I will see you Friday night as we encounter the living God together.